thanks everyone for coming along today um, for the third in this series. This is the breakthrough event series that we've been running this year. Thought it's in um, uh, in collaboration with AWS, uh, trying to tell a, a different side of the story a little bit. So trying to bring stories of innovation and resilience um, from uh, some of uh, the leaders and visionaries that, that we know across the Australian tech sector. Um, we've got a, a new face helping us present today. I'll, um, I'll do our intros in a second. Um, I want to acknowledge that uh, I'm presenting to you today from the country of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Um, I want to acknowledge traditional owners and custodians of country um, across Australia and, and pay our respects to elders past and present. Um, also want to call out today that uh, Katrin um, uh, Pagnia, who was hosting this series of events with us um, yeah, since event two, um, has uh, moved back to Europe um, and is taking on a new role within AWS. But I think from Belgium, or I think I think she's in the Netherlands. I think this time of day uh, uh, doesn't really um, lend itself to being able to host an event. So I'm, I'm very thankful for um, Britt for stepping in from the AWS team to help us today. And um, she's going to do a great job. So I'll introduce you to um, to today's speakers. Um, Joining us today's host is, is uh, Brittany McGovern. Brittany is a senior sales executive with AWS here in Australia. Um, you're in for some fascinating accents between the various panelists today, but I'll let them reveal that to you over time. Um, and she'll be in conversation today with Jason Barry. Jason's um, the chief technology officer at Bluestone Mortgages, um, previously of Nimble, uh, previously also of ThorWorks, to be honest, um, but has 20 years of international experience as, as a CTO. Uh, as we go along today, if you have questions, please pop them um, in the Q&A down the bottom. Um, we'll leave a bit of time at the end of the session to get to any questions that have come up. Uh, and um, if we can sort of weed them into the conversation along the way, um, we will. So um, uh, with that said, I'll, I'll throw to Britt and uh, Jay. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Um, you give away the secret that Jay and I are gonna sound a little funny during this, but... <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep for good entertainment. Uh, as, as Nick mentioned, yes, I, I'm with AWS. I've been here for just over two years. But prior to that, I was actually with Google for four years in, in the Sydney market here. Um, so I've had the absolute pleasure of working with fintech startups to enterprise uh, businesses and everything in between there. And there's something quite consistent across all my conversations, and that's the theme of innovation. So I'm really actually very excited to be here with Jay today because they have an incredible innovation story, um, something I think a lot of businesses on this call can, can relate to and the challenges that they face, but also how far they've come. So Jay, um, over to you, I guess, I guess, to chat about the first question a little bit more. Um, Bluestone has had some pretty audacious goals over the past, <laughs> coming into the next three to five years. What does technology and your team group do to influence that? Yeah, uh, thanks, Brittany. Um, great to be here. Uh, so uh, for, for anybody who's listening, I also have an interesting accent. Um, so <laughs> I'll uh, hopefully um, you'll hear me okay. Um, yeah, talking about the, the next three to five years for Bluestone is really exciting. And, you know, how do we in the technology group influence that? Well, look, you know, as an established lender in the residential home loan market, we've got about $11 billion under management. And our responsibilities are no less than the bigger lenders with far larger portfolios. Um, we're not a digital native. We've got existing platforms, technology. Um, we've existing users, engaged brokers, happy customers. And we've got a functioning and healthy business. With all that being said, we know that disruption is never far away and that technology enablement is key to allowing us to achieve our growth ambitions. And we, we can only do that by striving to be more like a modern digital enterprise. Um, within the technology group, we see ourselves as trusted advisors to the business whose purpose it is to work side by side with our colleagues to achieve, achieve our goals. Um, very much less of a shared service and more of a delivery partner. And it means that we very much have a seat at the table um, in terms of ideation, discovery, and effectively providing a pathway for all of our great and valuable ideas to come to life. Um, but it's not just about technology and programming and all of that goodness. It's about embracing a product mindset and having an outcome orientation be that outcome um, for brokers or customers or employees, and an outcome for one, 
typically translates into an outcome for another. Um, it's about clearly, clearly understanding those goals and objectives and bringing everyone, everyone who has a role to play on that journey. We balance all of that with ensuring that we're doing all we need to do to satisfy our compliance obligations, as well as you know, doing the day job of providing cybersecurity controls and data protections across our business. Um, we've invested significantly um, into shifting a lot of the control points left, you know, a typical control point, points such as cybersecurity, or sorry, security, uh, risk and compliance. We've shifted those conversations left in, in our delivery lifecycle. Um, by embracing things like compliance is called DevSecOps and all of those good good things. And all of those things help us to keep moving fast without compromising quality or, or compliance obligations. Awesome. You mentioned a couple of things in there that stand out to me. You talked about speed market. Um, you talked about obviously technology playing a role in your innovation journey, but people as well, uh, mm -hmm. having the right people. And I love how you're goal oriented. It was, wasn't just about you know, your, your end customers, but you spoke about the people in, in the office, the employees and, and, and making that innovation piece, all the different touch points. It's super, super critical. Um, innovation, okay, bit of, bit of a buzzword here. I know we hear it all the time, companies are innovating, but what does innovation really mean for Bluestone? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think an important call out is that innovation does not necessarily equal disruption. So, and innovation is relative. And a rather simplistic definition of innovation is like a new method, idea, or, or product. Um, and in that sense, um, anything for us that improves our customer, broker, employee, or partner experience represents innovation. Um, striving for disruption, seeking that you know kind of uh, on mind goal seem is incredibly uh, difficult to do, uh, especially for organizations that have established businesses. Um, but by innovating responsibly, and, but, you know, innovating uh, through ACT, um, you know, you can really start to, to shift an organization and, and help an org organization to grow. Yeah, and that's probably 99.9999% of companies are, you know, majority of them are not going to disrupt, but there's so many ways just to innovate and improve for your customer experience. Jay and I were having a bit of a chat before this, and we're, we're talking about how you're no longer competing now with just your competitors anymore. You're now actually competing with your customer's best experience they've ever had. And to kind of like give you an example of that, look at Uber. Yes, they were a market disruptor. They, they, you know, As Jay mentioned, they, they completely transformed the industry there. But now as a consumer, we absolutely expect that visibility and consistent touch points with every other experience that we get with Uber. If we're related to, to loan applications, being able to see how it's progressing and where it's at and not having to constantly follow up. Like, and that's something that, that your team has done really well. And you know, you talk about, you don't have to disrupt the loan market, but that's innovation in itself right there. Uh, absolutely. Look, we all know that the bar has been lifted in terms of what people expect from their interactions with the companies that, that they, they deal with. I mean, we are measured um, in terms of our experiences against Netflix and Uber Airbnb and, and companies like that. You know, people want to be, um, first of all, they want the experience to answer their question or, or deliver upon their need, right? Um, and home loans are no different, right? I mean, the, the home lending process is very complex. Um, and if we look at the systems and processes that are in today, um, you know, that's why the home loan process takes weeks, in some cases, months. My own home loan process took about three months to, to, to run it down. Um, and what comes with that is a huge amount of anxiety because what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with people's hopes and dreams. You know, young families are trying to uh, move into a new home so that our kids can play or, you know, whatever people's dreams are. And when we start to unpack that process and, and just break down the, the home loan origination journey, there's a huge amount can be done to streamline that process. Um, so from first touched application all the way through to, to application submission uh, on the underwriting process, et cetera. Providing a degree of transparency is very important because then people know they can see what's happening. Um, you know, it, it's not knowing is sometimes half the, half the problem in these things, right? Um, when will I hear back from 
um, you know, and, you know, the kids are getting excited about moving to new house and, you know, you're saying soon, 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 and you call your broker and you go, have you got an, an update for me? So we really did work very hard at unpacking that process. And we continue to unpack that process. We continue to look at how can we create better experiences for our customers? And it doesn't stop there because we also um, looked at, well, what does our internet banking um, value proposition look like? And at the time it was, it was fine. I mean, it served us well for many years, but we knew that it was not the platform upon which we could have that continuous conversation with our customers on. So as well as building up our digital lending platform and unpacking the originations journey, we've also delivered a new internet banking experience. So when a customer settles and you know they're picking up their keys, they will receive a very nice welcome email in their inbox with all of their uh, details. They're able to click on that and they can see their account and they're able to transact on their account um, immediately. And you know, also implementing things like real-time payments. So we've got redraw facilities and customers are able to distribute funds from their redraw facility into their transactional account over the MPP, which means that they can potentially have their money in less than 30 seconds, which is fant a fantastic outcome for, for our customers. Yeah, I, as you were talking to that, the anxiety before, I, I too just, you know, was fortunate enough to purchase a home recently, but also that meant a kind of a home loan process. And my God, it is so stressful. It is. <laughs> and just, is. just being able to know, like you said, um, and, and you made me feel so much better talking through the features that I thought, oh, you'd have visibility, knowing, you know, who your lender is, being able to communicate with them, um, where it is along the process, like just that little bit makes such a difference. That's why I call an Uber and not a cab. <laughs> it's pure yeah, because it's easier, feature. right? And you can see where, when you're going to get picked up, you've got that kind of confidence that you're going to get to where you need to go to, unless you live remotely like I do, in which case, not always, but, <laughs> but um, generally it works well. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of other people on the call too can, can probably relate to that, um, <laughs> that experience. So I'm sure yeah. we have, if we have some Uber, Uber preferences on the, on the call, then we would also have some Bluestone potential customers. <laughs> What, what I love, you mentioned this before there, Jay, a little bit about um, your team and, and I guess the innovation, how it's all about you bringing the best, your, it actually speaks clearly to mission statement here, bringing together the best people, partnerships and technology to create outstanding home loan experience. I think you just described that um, with your innovation project, what, what you've recently gone to market with. But, you know, it's, it's much easier said than done, but how, how do you go about de delivering on that? Yeah, that's 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 the thing, right? How <laughs> it's um, wow. we, we tend not to pay lip service to these things, right? So we genuinely believe that when we assemble a team of uh, you know like-minded individuals that possess the full spectrum of thinking and talent and all of the things you need to 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 build out these capabilities, um, and then you provide a way for them, you create that space, then really great things can can happen. Um, so our starting position is that we assume we can always do better. We ask questions, we measure, we compare, and very importantly, we take action. Uh, feedback is very important to us. Um, and we've worked very hard to ensure that people have clear line of sight on what the roadmap is, and that we clearly signpost why this work is important, why this investment into building this capability will deliver material benefits to our customers and um, or, or brokers etc um, therefore it's very much a, a data-driven mindset that's brought to bear upon our portfolio so therefore if we observe that something is working we've got the I, I guess the, the 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 team muscle and the data points to have that conversation go hey that's not working we've got to change what we're doing so we reserve the right um, it's kind of like that adage right the pivot pause proceed we're continuously mm -hmm. testing whether what we're doing makes sense and whether what we're doing is going to deliver on the, the outcomes that, that we all have signed up to, to deliver. Um, we've also got a really flat structure. And I know a lot of companies say they have flat structures. Um, but genuinely, I mean, when I'm fortunate enough to, to visit Sydney and I can't wait to get back there, um, everybody sits open plan, right? So all the exec, everybody is approachable. Um, that's very much exemplified by our CEO, Cam, very approachable approachable guy very smart 
Um, we make ourselves available to folks, ask questions. We reserve. Um, we, we have to understand that we can be challenged, and we, we people know that they can come up to us and challenge these assumptions about what is what we presume is going to work. Um, so I think that action orientation, um, creating an environment of true innovation, which means creating space for people and having mm -hmm. a kind of a, a a belief and a confidence that you can that we can do this right. It's very easy to talk yourself into a stencil. Yeah, you said something there that, that completely stood out to me and, and resonates with a lot of the conversations I have. It's it's not just about the technology. You could have the best technology solution, but if you don't have the right people and structured them in the right way and given them the space, exactly the space to innovate, space to be able to test and learn and be challenged, just to fail. Like if they don't have that, you won't have innovation in your company. So um, no, it definitely won't. takes courage. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, actually, just before I came into this session, I was in a team planning session and, you know, I was we we're talking through the technology roadmap, which is anchored to our portfolio. And I, I said that at the end, you know, there's all of these wonderful things in our roadmap that we're building, but what will make it win, what will help us succeed is the um, organizational capabilities, right? So our agile delivery practices or portfolio management or data governance, or risk governance, or architecture governance. It's the people, those mindsets, that will help us succeed. Because tech is tech. It's 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 an, an incredible enabler, but it's largely a commodity, right? And it's mm -hmm. people really that bring that to life to the benefit of organizations. Absolutely, and it's it could be one of the things that makes a, a fantastic idea or project fall down. Absolutely. <laughs> And probably what probably one of the actually the most challenging pieces to overcome because you're all working with people like transitioning how a culture a team works and operates and putting these these foundations in place um we, we call it internally when we build like teams like this the cloud center of excellence teams and how they structure their teams and it's it's probably one of the most challenging parts because people can learn people can learn a new technology like you generally hire smart people and they pick it up fast but if you don't set them up for success and and remove those barriers that you've mentioned then you know, you're setting them up for failure in the whole project. Absolutely. Look, we've had some incredible partners um, in the delivery in the delivery of our platform, including AWS and ThoughtWorks. Um, but at the end of the day, this is Bluestone's business. We have to shoulder the responsibility yeah. for the delivery of this success. And you know, while we had a a, a very um, ambitious delivery roadmap. We started last November and we went live earlier this month, which is fantastic. And the work continues. Um, in those seven short months, we pivoted. We adopted a cloud engineering mindset, a product delivery mindset, moving from project to product is not as easy as it seems. And then we had to bring people on that journey. And, you know, uh, you know I, I stepped out of today's team planning meeting and folks are there the same people who were there last November, they're all uh, kind of discussing the work, trying to understand how do we as a team organize ourselves around the work, what are the risks, what are the opportunities, and it's just brilliant to see, and it really shows that it's sticking, that innovation mindset, that delivery mindset is really starting to stick, which will is what will ultimately allow Bluestone to win. Yeah. And Jay, I'm actually going to give you a shout out here because yes, it's the people and structure in the right place. What I found as well is if you don't have leadership team buy-in, if you don't have the right leaders, it's a leader to champion this project. Um, and that's yourself. So that that's part of the recipe for success here. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're, you're too kind, uh, Britt. Uh, look, I'm, I'm one of many. I genuinely am one of many. Um, and we do talk quite openly um, about um, leadership. Less about management, to be honest, and more about leadership. It's it's empowering people. Um, you know, uh, the, the least valuable thing that I can do is actually do the work, you know, do the coding, do the architecture re reviews, stuff like that, right? It's empowering other people to do it and give them the clarity, um, the purpose uh, that motivates them to do their best work. Um, and that is, as I said, I'm one of many. That's exemplified by number of my peers in the organization you too humble i'm gonna speak on your behalf but we'll move <laughs> on we'll do, agree to disagree 
Um, you've alluded to it a, a couple of times throughout this, but I just really want to make sure we highlight the, the recent project and that you actually launched just this month. Um, can yeah. you give, give the group an example of, of what innovation, what, what the innovation project looks like for Bluestone? Yeah, so I mean, if you, you know, kind of um, lay out what the challenge was ahead of us, where, you know, I was about to say post COVID, well, not really, um, but, you know, coming out of the first phase of COVID, um, entering into a world that I think had a grand digital awakening, right? Every organization realized that we have to think deeper about our customer experiences and our digital touch points. Um, and I, Bluestone had arm wrestled with the need to build out a new digital lending platform for you know, two, three years. Um, but necessity is the mother of invention, right? And we absolutely had to get started. Absolutely had to get started. Um, and so the vision was there. Um, the uh, roadmap of how we would do it, because as I said, a lot of this stuff is commoditized, right? A lot of this stuff has been done in one form or another. It's contextualizing the challenge for your particular organization. Um, mm -hmm. That is really the, the trick here, right? And then getting the people on board, um, you know, getting started and doing it in a way that means that, you know, it's, it's sustainable in the long run. Um, and what we delivered is effectively, we set up a completely brand new digital lending platform, um, you know, built to the, to the highest of industry standards, right? Um, and that's, you know, a complete rebuild on AWS, serverless architectures. Um, we had to build out a new data platform, um, which is by itself no small undertaking. Um, a lot of organizations, if they could do that, and that alone in one year, they'd be doing well, but we had to do that yeah. in time. Um, we also had to start uh, kind of mind mapping what a infrastructure migration scenario might look like because we've got you know on-premise infrastructure, an existing application stack. How do we do a, a mass data migration of a of a live loan book that you know is is measured in billions of dollars and thousands of people's homes? That's no small undertaking. Um, and then we started obviously the internet banking experiences. How do we, you know, how do we build better experiences where, where you know, I think from the outside looking in, um, we don't have, uh, you know, we, we've got a really good website. We've got really functional customer experiences, but we had to mm -hmm. kind of flip our thinking a little bit. And, you know, we started interviewing customers and non-customers. What do you expect from your internet banking experience? You know, so we had to do all of that in tandem. I think we had six or seven streams running in parallel. And that's all the way mm -hmm. from data platform, reporting, digital lending platform, internet banking. And that was all kind of orchestrated by a central portfolio team that made sure that the, the wheels kept turning in an orchestrated manner, that the, the teams remained synchronized. Um, yeah, and that's what's been delivered. And we went live uh, 3rd or 4th of July. Um, and pretty much immediately over the launch weekend, our originations platform uh, provided by NextGen, uh, working with those great people, they flipped a the switch and we, the deal started flowing in. And we settled our first loan only a few weeks ago. And now, obviously, the pipeline is building up and we're starting to see the deals flowing through. We can see people um, interacting with our internet banking experiences. And it's just great to see all of the, the lights slowly flicker to life. Um, uh, you know, it really validates all of the hard work um, and, and uh, those, those long evenings that we spent over the last seven and eight months. Well, I'm sure it, does, it doesn't sound like an easy feat. Did you say five work streams happening at the same time? Yeah, like, I, I think oh. it was seven at one, one point. <laughs> like I said, too humble. Um. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a team yeah. of an extended team of um, I would say about 100, 120 people. You know, so that's for for an organization of our size, um, that's huge. That is huge. That is incredible, and like a massive accomplishment. Like you said, like you know, innovation within any business, it it doesn't have to be about disrupting a business. It's just taking an idea and getting it live and, and getting getting started there. Um, 
Uh, and I, I love some of the features that you've launched there. Some, some of the highlighted ones was obviously the mobile first piece, um, the automation of valuations of properties. That's one I really liked actually, but I thought it was quite expedites things and gets things <laughs> moving a little faster. But probably, you know, significantly for the, the customer, I, I like how you interviewed not only your existing consumers and con customers, but ones that aren't yours and find out why they're not and what, what do they need. And a visibility of, of tracking and being able to be able to connect easily to your lender to get those updates and ask your questions. It just it just is a game changer when it comes to customer experience and you know a good reason why people would would go uh, for someone like yourself and, and go yeah, for uh, down. Absolutely. I mean, look, we're we're already one of the best in market in terms of SLAs and getting um, turnarounds back to our brokers. But as I said, you know, we always assume we can be better. And these platforms, these technologies allow us to, to do that. And we're continuously looking at how can we be um, better in the sense that how can we provide better feedback back to, to our brokers, mm. right? Because they are the representatives of our customers. Better feedback to the brokers is better feedback to the customers. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to wrap up with, with one more here um, and then we'll throw it over to any kind of questions over to you, Nick, as well. So I guess last one is, you mentioned you had seven streams happening for this innovation project, but what's your advice for the people on the call? Like for someone who has an idea of innovation, but don't really have a roadmap in place, where, where did it begin? Yeah, so I think um, the, the first Still thing is, to, the first <laughs> thing is to, to know that, um, you know, you're not alone, right? Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, again, innovation is relative and some people's uh, uh, challenges are incredibly complex, you know. Um, but for the majority of people, um, it's about getting started. Now, you know, it's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to talk yourself into a stencil and use excuses like it's too hard, too expensive or too risky. And sometimes we fail to start because we feel we don't have the delivery maturity or the innovation governance in place. We feel we don't know enough to have an absolute guarantee of success well there's no guarantees in life right um all of that stuff is important but less so at the beginning um mm -hmm. and if you wait too long before you know it others in the world who have made more courageous decisions and backed themselves and their teams they'll have moved on and left you behind so yes we spoke about having seven streams it started off as one right um, we assembled a team of people who had done very similar things in the past. We had an engaged team of partners that we could look to to fill the gaps that had industry insights. So, you know, you, people say you stand on the shoulders of giants. We certainly did. I mean, we, we didn't do this alone. Um, what we did was that we created a space, we assembled a team, and we got started. And as I said, we started off with one stream, which was effectively, you know, how do we um, kind of ingest loan applications and settle into Mambu, which is our, our core banking platform. And from that, we knew, and we knew this would happen. It mushroomed out because obviously then you need to think about data governance, your data strategy. You got to think about portfolio management. You got to think about internet banking. And then, you know, we, we I guess, cultivated the work and the work fanned out mm -hmm. into the multiple delivery streams. The important thing is that if we had tried to completely understand the, the full breadth of the challenge ahead of us and understand all of the detail of what was ahead of us, we would never have gotten started. And by getting started, uh, and again, I'll point back to the people, the people that we have in Bluestone, the partners that we have, and they allowed us to kind of get to where we are today. And we've got another six months ahead of us of building some really cool stuff. Um, and But the work that kind of courageous, those courage, courageous decisions made last September, October, November, are what got us mm -hmm. to where we are today. So what I'm hearing there, just to summarize, um, yeah, don't get that perfect, get in the way of a puck, <laughs> getting started. Um, and it, it sounds like there's, there's a couple of different things there. There's obviously, yeah, just get started, get the right people you mentioned, whether it's partners, people internally, but also importantly, create the environment for them to succeed, create space for them to innovate and learn. So for me, that's kind of, I guess, the three, three, take, three key takeaways that I've heard from you today. Thanks, Jay. 
Nick, do we have any questions online? I know we're right at time. We're very right at time. We've got, <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Fascinating conversation. I think you've, you've answered most of people's questions, Jay. There's not a lot coming through. I think it's been, you've covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Um, we do have two quick questions and, and might sort of get the sort of 10, 15 second tweet length version answers to these. Um, first one's, uh, what's your time to credit approval and has this changed with your new platform? Uh, so look, I, I can point to um, one of the first loans that settled and we were seven days to unconditional. Actually, two business days to unconditional because the loan was submitted on a Friday and it was approved on a Monday. Cracking Moses. I I did my homework with the wrong people. Um, I haven't gone through that in the last <laughs> month, that's correct. <laughs> but, uh, of and, course, uh, uh, the application has to be clean, et cetera, but we were able to do that because we had all of the data, all of the automation capabilities, et cetera. Uh, and there's, there's one uh, question here around managing talent, um, around how do we, uh, you know, how do you manage talent, um, getting the right people, that side of things. Uh, we might not have time to cover that today, but we, We'll get the details of the person that um, has asked that and we'll, we might follow that up with, with email if that works. Uh, I don't think that's a 30 second answer. <laughs> uh, not in this day and age. Um, thank you both for your time and stuff. Thank you everyone for coming along. Um, wonderful turnout, a lot of new faces and, and a lot of new faces as well. Um, so thanks again to Brittany and to Jay for, for their time. Um, we'll be in touch over the next couple of weeks. We'll have, uh, send up a follow up email to this. We'll send out a recording so you can share it around. And then we'll be back uh, sometime mid to late September um, uh, with another uh, event in the series. Thank you everyone for your time this afternoon and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks everyone. See you folks. Thanks.